In addition to smoothing over problem areas of an image, Smart Blur can also be used to enhance sharp lines in an image. Let me show you how, because a couple tricks are involved. Select my layer and choose Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Smart Blur. Now underneath Mode, there's this wonderful diagnostic mode called Overlay Edge that allows you to see exactly what Smart Blur is doing. These white lines show you what areas Smart Blur is going to keep sharp and it's going to blur all the areas in between. Well, there is an edge only mode as well, where the original image is blacked out and you see just the white lines. We can isolate those lines and use them to enhance this image. First, I'm going to duplicate my layer because I want an unaltered copy to composite on top of. I'll remove Smart Blur from the copy on the bottom, choose a copy on top, and keep Smart Blur on that copy. Secondly, I'm going to apply Smart Blur using a blending mode so that we don't see just black and white. So I'm going to toggle switches and modes, the shortcut's F4. And whenever I have a black layer with bright highlights, I use one of the modes in the Add category. Add, Screen, one of the Dodge modes. We'll use Add for now. Now the black areas have disappeared because they're adding nothing to the image, and the white lines are clearly visible. If I want, I can press T for transparency and fade down or fade up the strengths of those lines. If I wanted the opposite, if I wanted black lines, I'll put it to 100%, and I'll add to this chain effect, channel, invert. Now I have black lines on a white background, and I'll use a different mode, something in the darken or multiplier color burn category. We'll use multiply initially. And now I've got dark outlines on top of this image. I'll switch back to white outlines for now. Delete invert, go back to add mode. Now you might have noticed that these lines are heavily aliased. There's no smoothing going on. That's because edge only mode was only intended to be a diagnostic mode. It was not intended to be used creatively. To smooth those lines, we need to add more resolution. And to do that, we're going to use an old trick called oversampling. First, I'm going to take my copy on top, the one that has Smart Blur applied, and do layer precompose, where I send it off to its own composition. I'm going to say leave all attributes in the current comp, Smart Blur 2, because I want to leave Smart Blur in the current comp. I'm going to name this Double Size Precomp. I'll say go ahead and open it when you're done. Press enter. Now I have a copy of my footage in its own layer. In After Effects CS4, I'll tap shift and see my chain. Double size precomp goes into Smart Blur. I want to double the resolution of my original footage in this comp so that I can scale it down in the next comp and therefore get some anti aliasing. To do that, I'm going to do Command K on Mac, Control K on Windows to open up the composition settings. I'll lock my aspect ratio and double my size, and you could triple it or quadruple it or whatever you've got the RAM and processing power for. Click OK. Now I've got a small video and a big frame. I'll right click on the footage and choose Transform Fit to Comp. And now I have scaled up my footage 200% to fit this comp. OK, let's go back up the chain to where Smart Blur is applied. Click on Smart Blur 2, and you'll notice initially that my blurred out lines no longer line up with the underlying footage. That's because this underlying comp is now double size. To offset the double size comp, I'll scale down to 50%. And now my lines fit the size of this comp again. You'll also notice that where I'm starting to get a bit of smoothing and anti-aliasing in those lines, getting some gray values so they're a bit more subtle. But I still have just white lines over this image. I want to make them a different color. Well, to do that, I'll add effect, Color correction, tint. Tint allows me to change either the black or white colors in a layer. Since my lines are white, let's change that. And pick something that would enhance maybe something in a bright orange or yellow area that kind of goes along with this background. I'll pick something a little bit more electric orange there. Click OK. Now I'm starting to get some interesting outlines. Here's before and here's after. Again, I can press T for transparency. Blend it into taste, put it back up, try a different modes, such as perhaps color dodge, which is again even more subtle. I'm going to tweak my color interactively now that I see what this new mode's doing. So I get some yellows and oranges in here. And I can even apply a blur to soften this up a little bit. Apply effect, blur and sharpen, box blur. Box blur is a very flexible blur because I can change how smooth it is. For now, I'm going to just put a single pixel blur, soften things up nicely. 
And I can make this a smoother or harsher blur depending on what I want. Again, before and after. Let's just jump to another part of the footage back at the very beginning. Smart Blur does take some time to calculate, but now I can see around his hands there's a bit of electric low again. Before and after. It's a nice enhancement to footage and it's an interesting look. It does take a while to render, but it's very useful. Just remember the tricks. Use a blend mode to drop out either the black or the white. Use tint to alter its color. Optionally blur it. And operate on a double, triple, or quadruple size version of the footage so that you can get some smoother anti-alias lines when you're done. Now, I like this technique so much, I've actually used this on some creative art pieces as well, not just video. For example, in this composition, is a photo of the Natural History Museum in San Diego. And you can see this building has very strong architectural lines. It's very graphical. And I decided that I wanted to enhance those lines by using this Smart Blur trick. So here is what I call my outline etching layer. I'll turn it on, take a second to render. And now you see these nice black, almost hand-drawn or pencil-drawn lines on top of the building. It takes it away from being photographical and now looks much more like an illustration. Let's look at this layer in isolation. There's my outlines. I've used Smart Blur in edge-only mode. I've inverted it, so I've got dark lines against a white background. Without the invert, it'd be white lines against a darker background. I've got tint, so I can go ahead and push the black around to a more purpley color instead of being pure black. And I've used a blend mode, in this case in the Multiply and Darken category, Linear Burn, and I could have used other modes as well. That now composites on top of the image in this way. Very fun. Now that I've got strong outlines in this building, I happen to have taken this one step further personally. With this structure, I was now able to start eroding some more of the integrity of the building. I took this grunge mat layer. It comes from the DV Garage Surface Toolkit Library, one of my favorites. And I used it as a mat to erode away some of the photo. So now I have this wonderfully weathered looking blueprint sort of image, which I think is a very nice enhancement over just the basic building that we had before. Anyway, the point of this is Smart Blur, like so many effects, can have two different functions in life, one corrective and one creative. Keep that in mind when you play around with other effects.